Welcome to part four of the Beige G3 Upgrade Extravaganza. If you haven't seen the previous three episodes, I'd recommend starting there so you don't miss out on any of the crazy upgrades that we've already crammed into this thing. But today, I've got a completely bonkers upgrade that I am extremely excited about. It's something I've been dreaming of owning for at least the last 15 years, since back when my daily driver was a blue and white G3. Yes, that's right. It's the power of purple, a Sonnet Encore G4. But can our beige beast really handle a G4 running at one gigahertz? Let's find out, stay tuned. But first, a quick recap on what we've done so far because this G3, well, G4 now, is already pretty impressive. We have swapped out the G3266 for a G4 straight out of a Power Mac Yikes G4 tower, and we've overclocked it to 385 megahertz. We've also maxed out the memory to 768 megabytes using finally the proper low density 256 modules. We have also installed a PCI SATA controller card and on that controller card, we've put a 120 gigabyte SSD, and we're using that as our boot drive for macOS Tiger that we installed with ex post facto. And this gives us data speeds of 133 megabytes per second up from the original IDE drives, extremely pokey, 16.6. So that's quite a dramatic jump. We also upgraded the video card to the RAGE 128 out of a blue and white G3. And we added a USB Firewire card, although only the USB part of it is working right now because of the VIA chipset. Now, this beautiful purple monstrosity is a Sonnet Encore G4 ZIF processor upgrade with a 1 gigahertz PowerPC G4 7455 which is a rather newer version of the G4 that was used in most of the actual Apple G4s. This has 256K of level two cache and one full megabyte of level three cache. It was released in April of 2003, and this beast originally cost $700 and was the top model of several G4 ZIF upgrades that kind of took Mac users by surprise because supporting the beige G3 models with an upgrade like that was generally considered cost prohibitive and nobody would spend so much money bringing one of these beautiful machines into the modern era in 2003. Now, if you've never heard of Sonnet, they are a manufacturer of Mac accessories in California who have been around for a very long time. In fact, they were founded back in 1986 and they really rose to fame in the late 80s and early 90s by being kind of the gold standard of Macintosh accelerators, which are generally processor cards that radically upgrade your machine. And if you ever opened a Mac and you saw that trademark purple heatsink inside, you knew that you had something special on your hands. And back in the day, I really lusted after Sonnet upgrades. Back in the early 2000s when I was in high school and just after, I actually used to drive around upscale neighborhoods on trash day looking for old Macs to liberate and I actually found several that way. And I always dreamt about opening one up and seeing that magic glimmer of purple inside. Anyway, let's see if we can get this thing installed. First, I wanna make sure we download the right drivers and pretty surprisingly, Sonnet still has all of this stuff available on their website. So I'm going to download both of the available drivers, even though I'm pretty sure we only need this cache enabler. Uh, the firmware updater, I think, is just for the blue and white G3, where Apple actually put a block in the firmware to prevent it from booting from a G4 processor. But our base G3 does not have that issue. But in any event, I'm going to download both of these and make them available on both our SSD and our backup CF card. Okay, so first I wanna get rid of this red VIA 
Firewire card. Because it just does not want to work right. Uh, it doesn't work at all in Classic, and it only half works in Tiger. And in its place, we're going to put in this fancy purple Firewire and USB 2.0 combo card, also from Sonnet. Okay, and now we'll carefully remove the G4 processor from the Yikes machine. And that clamp just went flying. That was pretty hilarious. Okay, now this is the motherboard from a G3 blue and white that has been upgraded with this one gigahertz Sonnet ZIF card. And before we remove it from the board, I actually wanna take these fans off because with these fans, this is actually too tall to fit in the desktop case. And also these fans are incredibly annoying and sound terrible. So I'm gonna carefully remove and unplug these fans before we pop this off of the socket because I don't wanna risk damaging the pins. So here it is in all of its defanned glory. And wow, that is beautiful. All right, now to gently install this. Wow, that takes up a lot of room. I'm gonna unplug all these cables first. And then I'm gonna to need to install this power diverter, which taps power off of the motherboard power connector to give the processor card a little bit of extra juice. Doesn't that look beautiful? All right, I guess we should temporarily plug some of these back in and make sure this boots up and then we can worry about our cable management. All right, let's power this thing on and see what happens. Oh, that's a good sign. And this is all normal just because of ex post facto booting from the SATA drive on PCI. Almost there. Oh my God, we're in Tiger. On the one gigahertz G4, let's see what this says. Whoa. It's a 1.05 gigahertz PowerPC G4. So we officially have an over one gigahertz beige G4. That's absolutely crazy. I cannot believe it just worked straight out of the box. No fuss. We're booted off of our SATA SSD drive. Absolutely incredible. So one thing I'm definitely concerned about is airflow in here. 
So I have a Noctua quiet fan that I want to see if I can mount maybe right here because there is a lot of holes in here meant for airflow to kind of help out this fan up here, which is the only real fan in the case. And this fan pulls in air up from the processor through the power supply and out. So I just want to help it get a little bit cooler air from the side of the case. So this is a quite small little fan. And I think I can mount it like here-ish, or probably here, and still have it be out of the way of the closing case. And then I have this little adapter, which will let me just plug it directly into a Molex connector if I can figure out how to get one over here. All right, let's clean up these cables a little bit too. All right, now everything's out of the way of the heat sink. And let's connect our little fan here. We'll use this Molex up here for the fan. All right, I'm gonna turn it on, see if the fan comes on and make sure this doesn't explode. Yep, fan is on and it's blowing cold air in the right direction. Yeah, that fan is absolutely silent and surprisingly strong. That is, I can really feel that. All right, so I put the machine back together and now it's decided to take an extraordinarily long time to boot. So it's hanging on this Apple logo for uh, 10 minutes at least. Uh, so what I think I'm gonna try to do is boot into the Jaguar install on the CF card and see if I can't use ex post facto to get back into Tiger because what I suspect went wrong is the cache extension that I installed is conflicting with the cache that ex post facto is expecting. So let's see if we can't boot off of the CF card. Hold down option. And it looks like we're booting into Mac OS 9.2. All right, let's boot into Jaguar. Okay, so off camera, I installed the Sonic Cache extension, which should allow OS X to fully recognize and take advantage of both the processor and the upgraded cache that it has. So let's turn this on and see how fast it boots up.
Wow, that was extremely fast. So, boots up in seconds as opposed to minutes. That's amazing. All right, let's take a look at about this Mac. There's our 1.05 gigahertz PowerPC G4, and it's recognizing our one megabyte of L3 cache. Let's system profile this. All right, and it's fully recognizing the CPU type. It sees both caches, 256 level two, one megabyte level three. That's amazing. We are now fully installed with our Sonnet one gigahertz G4 card. Everything is fully recognized. Everything is running fast, extremely fast. Just look how silky smooth this is on our beige G3. And someone suggested that we run a Geekbench benchmark on here, and I think that's a pretty awesome idea. We got a Geekbench score of 450, which is actually higher than I was expecting. Integer performance scored 589, floating point 587. Memory performance, uh, paltry 157 and memory bandwidth, and even worse, 78. Of course, the interesting thing is comparing this score to other machines. All right, if we take a look in the Geekbench 2 results browser, and I've searched for PowerPC, and let's sort by score and see what kind of machines our beige G4 stacks up against. All right, so if we look at the computers our 450 score stacks up with. We've got a lot of Power Mac G4 Quicksilvers. Got an iBook 900 megahertz, PowerBook G4 Quicksilver, iMac G4 20 inch, uh, 1.2 gigahertz. Yeah, it's a lot of Power Mac G4 Quicksilvers. So we have basically created a beige Power Mac G4 Quicksilver. That's pretty crazy. Yep, lots of Quicksilvers, lots of iBook G4s, PowerBook G4, 12 inch 867. Yeah, I think we have built an absolute beast. All right. So of course the ultimate test I wonder how this thing does with YouTube. All right, certainly not the fastest to load YouTube, but it loaded it in about 30 seconds compared to four minutes on the previous G4 that was in here. So that's pretty good. And here we are on the page of my favorite podcast, The Mac Yak. And why don't we check out the last episode? Streamed 17 hours ago. All right, not the fastest to load or to track, but it's playing. We've got the chat replay and everything.
Wow. Nothing exciting. Just it's playing, guys. We've got the sound coming out of the tiny front mounted Power Mac speaker. I bet you never thought you'd hear YouTube coming out of one of those. Let's take a moment and zoom out here. Now there's something I never thought I would see. A Power Macintosh Beige G3 from 1997 playing YouTube with the sound coming out of the front mounted speaker. I could totally watch this podcast like this. Let's turn this down. I mean, the sound is perfect. I could definitely listen to this podcast just like this. And maybe that's kind of fitting. All right. Well, I think that'll do it for this video today. Just to recap, we have fully installed our Sonnet G4 1 gigahertz running at 1.05 into this beige Power Mac G3, along with all of the other upgrades that we've done in the other episodes, which are, as I mentioned, linked below. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, please subscribe. This definitely isn't the last time we're gonna see the beige beast Power Mac G4. So thank you very much for watching.